Hey guys, Killstokes here. I want to hop in and give you guys a quick video. Hope your weekend is going well. We're going to be here on the euro dollar and I want to follow up on um, kind of what I'm looking at this week based off how we ended last week. Last week was the first week of a new month, which means it is a jobs week where kind of our maybe not necessarily biggest because it's under monetary policy, but biggest kind of consistent um, news related release comes out which the non-farms payroll and specifically due to the monetary policy changes that are being considered here in the us and in, in many other uh economies as well this was a very important one we did end up getting a very strong jobs number and we saw the dollar gain strength as we ended the week so what i want to do afterwards i don't want to trade the non-farms i've done youtube videos and shorts about why that could be a bad idea but i want to reflect after after our moves have been made and ask myself, what is next? So what I'll do is I'll, I'll take you through my general analysis, right? I use a process called IPDE, identify, predict, decide, execute, where I want to identify what price action is doing. So use my eyes to see where price is at, what key levels have we come to on the chart. I then want to predict based off of what I see, what I think price is likely to do next. Then I want to decide how I can get involved, and that's going to be rules-based based on what's inside my trading plan. And then finally, E is execute the trade. So if I erase this real quick, I kind of already saw what I had in mind, but price action has just broken and closed. We call it a violation below a key level of structure support. So after we break and close below a key level of structure support, my expectation is that we will continue down to the next level of structure support. And that next level is going to be right down here. You can see that's where price has ended the week. Now, in order to predict another potential move lower, I need to see a break and close below that level. And that's something that we have not gotten yet. So until then, right, and this is the kind of the, the counter trend nature in my trading style, my prediction is that price action will hold and that we're likely to see a little bit of relief. Now, relief doesn't mean a full blown extension, a full blown reversal, anything like that. It just means like a little bounce, right? The sellers are getting tired, they're cashing out, less sellers are interested. It's a good opportunity for for some buyers to take advantage of a, a very small area of relief. And here's a cool thing about that other area of structure that I drew on before, this previous level of structure support that was now broken, or that was then broken and violated. It now becomes the next potential level of structure resistance, which also becomes a potential target area. So this is the prediction of if we're likely to go higher off of this bounce, then I think we're likely to go higher to at least this level that's why it's always cool to kind of keep your markups on the chart so what we've had here is we've had a obviously a big strong bearish candle to end the week here we then had a doji candle as price tried to retrace a little bit off it but got rejected and we ended the week um with some profit taking i would expect which gives us that bullish candle if we go down one more time frame to the hourly chart this is actually going to form a classic pattern formation as well so if we zoom in on this level here we have something called a double bottom where again price action came down strong bearish candle tried to come up a little bit this was that doji type of candle and then came down to retest that level now what's important here is that on this retest you can see that we held we did not break and close below we came we tried to get there right we broke below but did not close below and then we came back up to maintain um our, our double bottom here. And then on the very next candle, we tried to push again even lower and got rejected and still maintained our double bottom. Now, a double bottom in its own right is a nice classic um, pattern in the market. It's a good entry pattern. It's one that I specifically prefer. Um, obviously, it's got to be at the right place. But speaking of structure, this was at the right place. Now, if you're late to a double bottom, this is where something I was taught called the 2618 comes into play. And what we want to look for is this. We want to look for the violation of the high of this classic pattern, which is going to be right here. So I would want to see price action break and close above this level. And then if, we, if you're a breakout trader, you can trade it right there. That's that's in your own right. But a 2618 trader, you're then waiting for price action to retrace one more time back into this double bottom area. So this is going to be like your classic pullback trade right and then look to capitalize on that next extension up either to a retest of those highs or to an extension uh to that previous level of structure i told you about earlier and then the second level would be this is a nice level right here you got a little bit of uh 
little bit of an obstacle there, but this would be the second level if you're looking for kind of a, maybe a larger, more aggressive target here. So a cool opportunity, uh, potentially setting up on the euro dollar. Obviously, we don't know what's going to happen until the week starts. Um, we can always, this can turn into a sideways channel and then that gives us a whole different option. But um, if I'm able to, I'll try to follow through with this video like I did the last one on pound yen. And I hope you guys learned something, right? So wishing you guys a great week of trading in the market. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And until next time, plan your trade, trade your plan. Take care.